Hello everybody, welcome back to Coombe Valley Campers. Today we are going to be carrying out a much needed and often overlooked upgrade on the 2K T5 camper. Just want to say thank you to A-Plan Modified Van Insurance for sponsoring this series of Coombe Valley Campers. We actually have the 2K T5 insured with A-Plan Modified Van Insurance because they will insure your vehicle from the moment you buy it until you convert it to a camper van and beyond. And if you would like a special rate for your next policy, mention Coombe Valley Campers at the time you're asking for a quote and they will sort you out. One item that is often overlooked when building a car or one thing that is thought to be quite expensive and maybe not necessary when you're building a car or a van are the door rubbers. This van in particular behind me, you may have seen from previous videos, is basically a knackered old car. And with that, the door rubbers have been split, broken or compressed so much over the last 19 years and 200,000 miles that they're not actually doing their job properly and you will be surprised how much difference it makes when you replace them. In front of me, you will see we have an array of different parts in, um, on the table. We have door rubbers. We have some extra door seals that help the noise when you're driving. We have a sliding door seal and we have a rear aperture seal. I say rear aperture because you can use this seal in particular on both barn door and tailgate vans. And the last little one you see in front of me is for the lower front door. And that is, this presses up against the wheel arch and stops dirt and water ingressing into that door aperture. So I think what we'll do, we'll take a look at each seal and then get them fitted onto the vehicle. Like I said before, all of these parts come from Heritage Parts Center. And I just want to remind you that if you enter Coombe Valley 10 at the checkout, you can receive a 10% discount on all your parts. So we're gonna start at the front of the vehicle and work our way back. And that'll lead us straight into doing the door rubbers first. Now, if you own a T5 or any other van in particular, I guess, um, you will notice that the leading edges or even the footsteps, and this one's a prime example, the rubbers actually start to split, then you get water in them, and then actually the metal reinforcements within the rubber start to rust and break. And all of a sudden, and I think I'll show you, well, I think it's done it on the driver's side and I'll show you in a minute. Um, if I can show you here, there's basically rust within that door rubber, that rust, uh, sorry, that door rubber then basically becomes useless. And actually replacing the door rubbers isn't a very difficult job. This just cut the pointers really. Again, starting with the front, most of the trim around the front of the van actually sits within the rubber, makes a nice flush finish and enables the rubber to do its job. But an easy place to start to pull is actually right here. Um, and believe me, I wouldn't be doing this job here. I'm doing this so you can see what I'm doing. This is quite uncomfortable. Anyway, um, we are basically just gonna pull the rubber all the way around until we get to a point like this where the trim doesn't even come off. Oh, sorry, where the rubber won't come out because this trim's here. So what we're gonna have to do is remove this trim first. I've shown you how to do that in a previous video so we won't film it. Um, the rubber will come out of that headliner just fine. And if I carry this on, it's not gonna come out of the step. The step should just pull out. Do excuse any background noise, by the way. We've got some neighbors next door. They've got their music loud. Free world, they can do that. I just wanted to make you aware that there might be some background noise. Right, so that step's come out and you can see that we're gonna need to remove more and more of this plastic. I'd love to be able to do this without removing the plastic. But as you can see, some of the, some of the parts don't actually come out. In fact, that's a fib. They are coming out, which is great. But if I bring you right in here, you can see the inside of this rubber is actually rusting away. All right, and that's where your rubber start to basically deteriorate and they're not doing their job properly. On the sliding door and actually the back door, I'll show you where the rubbers have failed over time. Yeah, you can actually see 
uh, telltale marks of where water's been leaking in. So it's a good time to replace. Um, another point to note when you're removing and then replacing your rubbers is where the join is. Now in this part here, we're just a couple of inches up above the step. So when you come to reapply this rubber, you want to ensure that you start and finish here where the factory rubber did start. But let's have a go at removing these still. So that's good. That means we will be able to pop these rubbers back in without disturbing too much or removing too much of the interior trim. We can keep going round. Is that going to work, Chris? I think what I'm going to do is just remove this handle, which means this will be able to flex out and then I'll bring you back. As I explained earlier, we've got some rust in there and that has actually made the metal reinforcement, so the metal reinforcement that runs all the way through, as you get in and out the van, your door scuffs on the edge, water gets in, rusts out the metal bands, and now that rubber has absolutely no properties at all that will keep it on the door frame compared to say further up where that's nice and rigid. So probably a bit overdue, but a good time to get that rubber changed. Let's go and get the new one. Now is, I guess, the fun part. Um, we're gonna start refitting the rubbers onto the edge of the door frame, starting off where we noted where the split was. And it's gonna be a case of pressing the rubber on sounds like I'm teaching you how to suck eggs really but we've done plenty of these and what you really have to take note of is pressing right down into the corners and also not stretching the rubber and it's quite easy to do because you might get all the way down to this point and notice that it's sorry too short so you've just got to press the rubber onto the door frame enabling it to sit all the way home I'm going to spin, enabling it to go all the way home and pressing it into the corners rather than sort of pulling and stretching. When we get to the areas like this rubber doormat, we can peel out that edge and ensure that it has the factory finish, covering all those areas up like it did before. And then in areas where it doesn't need it, we can tuck the rubber away. We've got 99.9% .9 of the rubber in. As you see, I had to heal away more of the plastics than I wanted to originally, but in order to get a good finish, you have to do that. Ideally, you want to replace the rubbers uh, probably earlier than this when all of the cab is disassembled. Way easier to do it then. But in this case, I'm having to peel the plastic or just prise the plastic out, put the rubber in, uh, and then we'll replace it all when we put the van back together. As you can see, I've probably got three, four inches worth of excess there. Now I'm not gonna trim any of it yet. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a rubber mallet and I'm going to hit the rubber all the way around, starting from where I started applying the rubber. And I'm gonna hit that rubber on that ridge all the way home, all the way around. Then I'm gonna double check all of this trim fits really, really nicely. Then and only then I will make that final cut and I'll make it just slightly longer. Maybe make it five to 10 mil longer um, than I need to. And then I can just sort of gather it back up. And that means when the two parts go together, they'll be butted up together, each other really, really tight. Make for a super clean finish. I'll go and get my mallet. I have my trusty mallet, rubber mallet here. Um, we always chuck a fresh bit of masking tape on it whenever we're doing like a new project. Just sort of protects uh, whatever you're hitting with the dirt from the previous job. 
it's what it is really so i'm going to start from where i did the join and you'll be able to see as i go around like the high spots of the rubber where i just pushed it in it'll seat all the way home When it comes to cutting the rubbers, like I said, you want to be trimming just a little bit past where the join is. So when you push them together, there'll be a nice compressed slot. Also, that will give you a, um, an opportunity if you do mess up the first cut, then you can have another little go or at least tidy it up. Um, all I'm using in this case is a Stanley blade, fresh Stanley blade. I don't have a tool specific for cutting these rubbers. Let me know what it's called if you do have one. But basically I've roughly marked my spot there and I'm going to make a nice smooth cut all the way around. I'm gonna try and find that point in between the metal, the metal ribs that go within the rubber. So I found the, met the point there in between the metal ribs. Make sure I've done my cut all the way around. And then to basically snap off the metal spine just going to give it a wiggle if it wants to play. And there we go. So the only bit of metal you have to kind of break is the spine bit, which is the bit at the top. So I did the cut all the way around, managed to fit the blade in between the ribs to this point, And again, all the way around to that point, gave it a wiggle, snap that bit, and you've got a nice clean edge. And then when I offer it up, you notice I've got like six inches here that's not connected and that's because I'm going to press it onto the metal at the join first and then push the rest home and what that'll do is compress these two really really nicely and your aim is for kind of a, a seamless edge really. There we go, your edge is nice and tight down there, butted up together and now what I can do is put the interior or the door trims back together and show you the end result. So a couple of points to know then, when you are fitting the rubber, make sure you clean the area first. If it's the first time you've ever removed your side steps, make sure they're clean, um, vacuum, vacuum them out. It's not always a good plan. Um, what would make the whole job a lot easier is to actually remove all of this first. There you go, come on in you go. Remove all of this first, then fit your rubbers, and then you can put it all in after. I've been showing you it with the trim on, so it is possible. It's just a bit more of a pain, really. So once I've fitted, oh, last thing to note, when you go ahead and put all your trims back in, just make sure to sort of flick that bit of rubber over and you get a nice factory finish all the way around and that's like for like and i guess what we've got to do is close the door for the final time and see how it sounds super let's give it a try very nice now what i do hope that does is stop the whistling because there was a bit of whistling as we were driving along it wasn't the window because i've sort of cleaned and serviced those um, but i was getting a bit of noise in there too so that's all done in the kit there is also this extra door rubber seal now i'm not going to be fitting it today on camera purely because we've already done a video on this um, and it is available as a part separate to the rest of this rubber deal so if you want to improve um the sound of your door as it closes and it reduces road noise as well makes it sound just like a golf um, this is a self-adhesive rubber add-on to your door and basically what you do you make sure you clean this area down here and under the door and you peel a stick really you start up just kind of halfway across say that rubber bung stick the rubber on here follow the guide all the way round and run under to the door and you'll see on the other video where to do that. You cut the rubber just with a pair of scissors this time. There's no metal in a structure in it. And then you do the same as the other door. Now we're not going to be doing that to this door today purely because we've got to clean the door up 
and there's a high chance we're gonna get this painted very soon. So it'd be a waste of time me throwing that self-adhesive rubber on and peeling it off in a couple of weeks time. So yes, check out that video and you can get that kit or you can get that rubber separately or as part of this bundle. Moving on to the middle door or the sliding door. Um, it's quite an important one actually. Your sliding door is the one that kind of gets most of the abuse. As you can see by this one here, there's tear marks. It's split down here in particular. There's a hole split down there and water's got in as well. And if you take a look all the way up in the top, you can actually see some telltale marks of where that rubber's been leaking. Um, and if you look just up in this top corner, you can see why. Basically, dirt gets up onto the rubber, sits in there, and then it wears the top of the actual sliding door itself. So dirt gets in as you're driving along, it rubs against the paintwork, rub, um, could potentially rub that paintwork down to bare metal, you could get rust in your door. But also again, because it's a door that gets used a lot, these rubbers compress and just wear out. So much like we did on the driver's door, first thing, take note of where the split is. Now, the factory door rubber doesn't, sorry, the factory door rubber is one complete piece. The replacement is um, not a complete piece. It's got a split in it. But what I have noted is that the split in this rubber in particular is just above this piece of metalwork here. You see, it's just there. So what I'll do, I'll start and finish my rubber there. And as you can tell by the driver's door, it doesn't really matter if it's joined or not, as long as you butt them together nice and tight, it'll be fine. And this one is super easy. Within seconds, I can peel that one all the way off. There's no trim involved. Again, this is a job that can be done quite nicely when you're carpeting your van maybe. So you're doing your carpeting, you've got to take off the door rubber anyway. So why not replace it? Um, first things first, I will clean up the area of all the old crap. So clean it, dry it, start the split from here. When I'm very happy with the fit, leave a bit of excess, bang the rubber in all the way, and then trim the bit off. I couldn't really show you this technique on the driver's door because I was trying to fumble all the rubber into the door trims. But as a little point to note, I bend the rubber sort of towards me as I apply it onto uh, the rib of metal. And that kind of opens up that lip a little bit, makes it easier. It's kind of a bit less effort for you as well, I guess. So. If I get that all the way around, you know it's going firmly all the way home. And I think before I go much further, I'm gonna get my mallet. Just make sure it's in all the corners. That's interesting. What I'm seeing here is obviously where this van was loaded and unloaded in the past, this lip seems to be bent in, bent in slightly. So the profile of the rubber looks slightly different. Maybe it's just the way I'm looking at it, but might have to address that later down the line. Getting right in that corner. Then continue to feed it all the way around, banging the edges in. Then when you get back to here, we'll have a quick check. Now, as you can see by the dirt and crap on my inner wing, I'm actually missing 
this rubber, which is why I asked for a new one. Um, as you can see, especially if you're running big wheels and tires like that, the dirt is getting into the gap between the door and the arch and just flicking right up here. Um, this piece comes with all the white clips in already, saves me a job. Or if you've got this rubber and missing those clips, you can purchase them separately from Heritage also. What I'm gonna do here, and it should be a fairly simple fix for me, I'm gonna clean this whole area up because I'm hoping not to get the dirt in ever again. Clean up the area here also, because that's where the rubber's gonna be touching. And then it should hopefully be a case of just popping it in. Do excuse the paintwork. This was, this was carried out before I bought it. If you've not seen the previous episodes, where I bought this from, they were gonna do the bodywork themselves on the drive, or they were gonna have a body shop do part of the paintwork, they were gonna do the part of the paintwork, who knows? But they started priming it and even painting inside the arches like you can see here. And that's about as far as I got. And then I bought it and decided to replace a load of parts before I ever painted it. But hey ho, we'll get there. Still doesn't look too bad though, eh? So now that is all clean, well, whilst cleaning it, I realised that there is still one of these white clips up in the door there. So I've got me a small trim tool. I'm going to attempt to take it out. There we go. Dropped it. Where is it? Down there. Anyway, so that clips out and what it had done is sort of pulled itself out of this rubber. All nice and clean. Get the right side. Now you can tell the right side by this slash cut on one end and that matches up with kind of this arch here. So if you were to offer it up real quick, you know it's right because that slash cut kind of goes in line with this arch here. So what I'm going to do is start from the top, put the first one in, clip, clip, third one, fourth, and fifth there. And that is actually a genuine VW item as well. So very happy with that. So no more messy inner arches. Nobody likes a messy inner arch, that's for sure. Moving on to the driver's side then, this side you can still see we're actually getting spray up here. And that's because this rubber, although it's here, it's not doing its job properly because we've got a couple of clips either broken or have pulled themselves out of the rubber. Fortunately, if I can find where I've put them. Oh, I've moved them. Oh no, where are they, Ellie? <laughs> there they are, I found them, right. Fortunately, we've been sent some of these clips. Now they are a VW part and they match exactly for what you need. So all we're gonna do is remove these white clips. Now, I don't know the reason why they came out, but they did. And then this one's actually missing from that rubber. So I can pull the old one out of the door. Oh yeah, that's in a mess. There you go. That old one was messy. By the way, when you're doing this, you don't have to sit inside your van in this awkward position. It's not very comfortable. So it actually looks okay, but we're gonna change it out anyway, because we can. Clean up the area, like we did before. And keeping these mating surfaces is pretty important, because if they are dirty, you're only gonna rub dirt into the paintwork and get issues like you have on this van, for example, where it's rubbed dirt into it, where it wasn't kept clean and then you get things like little rust bubbles forming and stuff. Not healthy. Oh, drain holes now unblocked. That's good. I'm sure when you do your van, you'll make a better job of this than I am. However, let's put these new clips in. One and... And that's two. Works well when you've got Nice set of tools. It'll be a case of popping it in. One. And two. That was a very satisfying click in there. And that feels way better. Another job ticked off the list for sure. Um, yeah, whilst we're down here as well, you can just see how bad that door rubber is. So we'll get that replaced too. Last but not least is the rear doors. Now, the rubber that you can purchase applies to both barn doors and tailgate. 
in this particular application, it's barn doors. I believe this rubber may have even been changed before. I don't know, but it's certainly due for a renewal and it's the same deal once again. We tear them off. Excuse me, you stay there. Tear them off, clean up the area and hammer the new ones on. Again, whilst you're doing your carpeting, you're gonna be removing these rubbers anyway. So it might be a really, really good time to change these whilst you're doing your carpeting. Yes, it's another expense, but it's the sort of job you only want to do once, especially if you're converting, repairing, restoring an older vehicle such as this. These rubbers are going to come off this van at least once more in the build, probably twice, because we've got to paint and rectify this crap right here, because this is pretty terrible. And you can just tell this man had a hard life in the past by, I've never seen one this bad in terms of a rear loading area. So I do look forward to sorting this out. And also we're going to be doing a tailgate conversion. In fact, it's just out of shot now, but the tailgate is right there. So I look forward to doing that in the future. That'll be an up and coming video. And it's quite simple, simple, I say that. But in this area here, you're basically moving one of these latches to here. So you've got a central pin for your tailgate, so the two barn doors. Anyway, that aside, I'll go and get the rubber. Contrary to what I said before about noting where your split is, I'm actually gonna start my split about here. And that is because I don't want that split to be in a main traffic area. Excuse the noise, by the way, if you can catch this. Started to hammer it down outside. Um, so as you noted or may have noticed from before, the split was dead center. I don't want my split dead center because I'd like it up here where there's not as much traffic. So I'm gonna start from up here and it's a slightly different pattern rubber this time. And it'll be a case of feeding her all the way around, all the way around and hammering it on when you're done. So maybe enjoy a little time-lapse and we'll bring you back when we're done. And there we have it. We have replaced our crappy old rusty rubbers with some shiny new ones, which will basically give this thing a whole new lease of life. Like I said, there was squeaks, there was knocks. Um, that sliding door in particular, although we've got to replace some runners, which will come up in a future video, because that runner on the bottom was broken, the whole door was shaking, squeaking. Now we've had a new rubber on it. It's absolutely lovely already. Um, once again, thank you very much to Heritage for sorting us out with the parts. You can use the Coombe Valley 10 discount code with Heritage at the checkout. Don't forget that. And that's it for today's video. Really, really helpful video in terms of what you can do at home to keep your T5 alive using that kit that we've showed you today. Thanks again. I'm Lee. This is Coombe Valley Campers. I'll see you on the next episode of the 2K T5.